Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We would like to thank God. We would like to appreciate God for yet another day that God has accorded us. Once again to go through the word of the Lord to hear what he has prepared for us. And uh, we enjoy every moment that God gives us. We always be grateful. And before we start, I would like to ask us to start with a heart of prayer. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus. I'd like to say thank you. I'd like to appreciate your holy name for yet another day, another opportunity, Jehovah God, you have given us to sit under the voice of God and to hear, dear Lord, the things that you have prepared for us, O God Almighty. I pray, use me as an instrument, use me as a vessel, and put thy word in my mouth, O God Almighty, that I speak not my own word, like the Bible say, that he that is sent speaketh not his own words, but the words of him that have sent him. And dear Father, I pray, help me to speak your word, O God Almighty, that it may be an encouragement unto your people. I commend my viewers, my listeners into the hands of Jehovah, that also God Almighty, you minister unto them through this word, strengthen the feeble knees and the hands that are hung down, they be lifted up in victory, O God Almighty. Build their faith through thy word. For the Bible says, faith cometh by healing, and healing by the word of the Lord. And that is what you want to do, to hear the word of the Lord, to listen to your word, O God Almighty, that we may grow in faith and in knowledge. In Jesus' mighty name I do pray. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Welcome once again. I'm so grateful and so thankful to the Lord for yet another day that God has given us, yet another opportunity that Jehovah has granted us to hear uh, the things that he has prepared for us. This ministry, uh, the Bible is saying, seeing we have received this ministry, it is a gift, it is a blessing, it is the favor of God of our lives that, that uh, we have been accorded an opportunity to sit under the voice of God in the book of Second Corinthians, the, the fourth chapter, I believe it is, the Bible is saying we faint not. Uh, in other words, as God's people, we cannot faint. We'll keep on uh, preaching this gospel. We'll keep on hearing the word of the Lord. We'll keep on uh, uh, sitting on this table of love that we may hear what God has prepared for us. And Paul, writing to the church in Corinth, in Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter, and verse number one, he said, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, uh, this is a ministry that God has given us, the ministry of the word of God, as we have received mercy. Now I'd like you to note that this gift of the ministry, this gift of the word of the Lord, is given by God through mercy. Uh, we didn't earn it. We didn't qualify for it. Uh, you, didn't, uh, you, didn't, you didn't have it. Uh, we didn't have it by our own power nor our own might. Uh, but it is by, if I can put my finger there and go to the book of Romans, the ninth chapter, the Bible is saying, it is not of him that willeth, neither of him that learneth, but it is God that showeth mercy. So you'll find even salvation by itself 
it is by the mercies of God, by salvation of a child of God, salvation of a righteous child of God is by mercy. Uh, so we don't earn it, we don't qualify for it in the book of uh, in the book of uh, Romans, the ninth chapter, verse number 15, for he said unto Moses, I will have mercy on whom I'll have mercy. So we don't qualify and God chooses and he decides who to show mercy and who not to show mercy. So whenever you find yourself in the true move of God, whenever you find yourself where the gospel and the word of God is being preached, then you count yourself as one that have obtained mercy of the Lord. Because salvation, it is chosen. It is God choosing. We don't choose ourselves. We don't decide on how to serve God. We don't decide on when to come to church. But the Bible is saying it is. I would like to put more finger in that first of scripture. And I go to the book of Ephesians, the, four, the second chapter. And verse number one, uh, the Bible is saying, And you have he quickened who are dead in trespasses and in sins. This is a, a we. Now we, God, God's people, them that are sitting under the voice of God. You that is listening to me, God has quickened. We were dead uh, in our trespasses and sins. We didn't have anything in ourselves to earn our salvation and to qualify for this gift of a salvation. Uh, verse number two, the Bible says, uh, But these uh, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. We used to be like them. When you see the ungodly, uh, the disobedient outside there, not giving heed to the word of the Lord, you should also remember you were once like that. You were once there. But God showed them mercy, verse number four. Uh, the Bible is saying, but God who is rich in mercy. So it is mercy. It is the mercies of God. It is not of him that dwelleth, neither of him that learneth, but it is whom God showeth mercy. But God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherein he have loved. So you find salvation is an expression of the mercies of God. Uh, we didn't fight for it, we didn't earn it, we didn't merit it, but God through his mercy, he chose you and he chose me. So you'll find we, before we were chosen, we were like every other man. Uh, we were ungodly, we were wicked, like every other man that have not found the mercies of God. But mercy separates us, separated us from the ungodly and gave us a desire, developed in us a hunger uh, for the truth and a hunger for the word of God. And that is why we are saying in the book of Romans, the ninth chapter and verse number 15, for he saith unto Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. So you'll find us to be called children of God, us to be called saints, it has taken the mercies of God. It has taken the mercies of God. And I'm uh, reminded of a man here, if I may lead uh, the separation even of, uh, of Abraham uh, from his kindred, from his, uh, his, uh, his, uh, his, uh, his uh, father and from every uh, or one of his family members, God said, I called him alone. Uh, in the book of uh, Isaiah, the 55th chapter, verse number one, he hearken unto me, ye that follow after righteousness. Ye that seek the Lord, look unto the Lord, wherein, where, whence you are healed. That is Abraham. So God is talking here about the children of Israel. He is talking about the children of Israel, how Abraham was called, how Abraham was chosen by God, how Abraham, through mercy of God, through the mercies of God, Abraham never merited it. Abraham never qualified for it. And God is telling uh, the children of Israel to look upon Abraham, the log, where whence they were healed, and to Sarah from the pit whence you were digged. That is Sarah. Uh, that is uh, their, their, their mother and their father, the children of Israel. Uh, verse number two, the Bible is saying, look unto Abraham, your father, and unto Sarah that bear you. So this is the children of Israel uh, that God is telling them to look back uh, where they came from, to look back from whence uh, God chose them from, where God picked them from. 
and it started with Abraham. And you find uh, from there, and I would like quickly maybe uh, to connect it, uh, we would like to quickly go to the book of 1 Peter, uh, the, third ch- the second chapter and verse number 9, then I'll come to Abraham to show you where we are coming in. The Bible is saying, but you are a chosen gen- generation. Uh, this is not written uh, to the Jews, but is written to the Gentiles. And Peter here is saying now the Gentiles are called a chosen generation. Why? Because God have chosen them. God have chosen us. Even as he chose Abraham by mercy. By his mercy, not by his uh, uh, qualification. Abraham have, had not qualified. Uh, Sarah didn't qualify when they were called of God. Uh, so you'll find, uh, if I may go back a little bit to where I was in the book of Romans, the ninth chapter, the Bible is saying, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. This is God. So God chooses. It is God through his mercy. It makes the difference. That is why we started by saying, seeing we have received this ministry, having obtained mercy. This ministry, the ministry to reconcile the Gentiles back to God. The people, the heathen, are back to God. And it is started also not only with the, uh, the Gentiles, but also the Jews. So the first number 16, the Bible is saying, So then it is not of him that willeth, so not human power, uh, not human uh, uh, not human ingenuity. You cannot decide. Uh, you cannot choose. It is started by the mercies of God. God extending his mercy over your life, over my life. So then it is not of him that willeth, neither of him that learneth, but of God that showeth mercy. And I want to thank God that you and me are partakers of the mercies of God. And that is why we proclaim and confess Jesus as our Savior and the Lord of our lives. It is started by the mercies of God. Uh, God extended mercy. It is not of him that willeth, neither of him that learneth, but it is God, but of God that showeth mercy for you, even to be alive. It has taken the mercies of the Lord. Uh, for you to find yourself in the way of the truth, it has taken the mercies of the Lord. As in the Bible say, it is of the Lord's mercy that we have not been consumed. It is of the Lord's mercy that we have not been consumed. That means if the mercies of God had not been bestowed over our lives, even the coronavirus, the COVID-19, would have killed some of us. But it is of the Lord's mercy that we have not been consumed. That should be in the book of Lamentation of Jeremiah. It is of the Lord's mercy that we have not been consumed. And again, the Bible says the mercies of God are new every morning. So you'll find we appreciate that to, to be who we are, to be in the church, uh, to be in the house of God, to follow and to love the truth, we acknowledge the mercies of God. Uh, so you find as a child of God, we are partakers of the mercies of God, and we need to acknowledge that. We need uh, to acknowledge the mercies of God over our lives. If I then now go to the book of uh, First Peter chapter 2, verse number 9, where the Bible is saying, but you are a chosen generation. Now, mercy chose you. Mercy chose you. It is not of him that willeth, neither of him that learneth, but it is God that showeth mercy. Now, when God then so shows you mercy, then you become a chosen generation. You are chosen of God. Uh, you didn't, uh, Jesus said to his disciples in John the 15th chapter, that you didn't choose me, Rather, I chose you. Mercy chose you. It is of God's mercy. You have not chosen me. John the 15th chapter and verse number 16. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. How does God choose you? It is by his mercy. So to some they are given mercy and others they are not shown mercy. So God, through his mercy, guided you, guided me into the truth. And not only guided me and you, but he opened our hearts to believe in this truth. When we received it, we imbibed it, we believed it, we, we embraced it. Because mercy has been measured, mercy has been extended. So you find that mercy, for you are a chosen generation, a loyal priesthood, and a holy nation, and a peculiar people. Now, I would like you to note here that Peter borrowed these, though he is talking to the Gentiles, but he is borrowing these from the Jewish. God had spoken this to the Jewish nation. 
The Jews were the people that God called his people in the book of Exodus, the 19th chapter and verse number 6. God had talked about these uh, saying that they are his people. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. This is to the Jews. This is to the seed of Abraham who was separated from his kindred who was separated uh, from his, uh, f- f- uh, his land and called out. And that took the masses of God. That, took, that is why you never compare yourself uh, with somebody else because they may not have received and obtained mercy. But for you, even to sit under the voice of God and to love the word of God, to love the preaching of the truth, it is because you have obtained the masses of God. God has separated you uh, from the world like he separated Abraham from his kindred and from his father's uh, land. And the Bible says, uh, you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. The word that Peter now is defiling and using, talking to the Gentiles. Remember, it belonged uh, to the Jewish it belongs to the Jews. But now Peter is borrowing that and he's speaking these uh, to the Gentiles again in Deuteronomy, the seventh chapter and verse number six, still God talking to the Jews. For thou art an holy people. Remember, Peter now is combining this in First Peter. He is combining that. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God, the Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special a special people unto himself. We are talking about the Jews, how they were chosen. And they were chosen through Abraham. And I can quickly go to the book of, uh, to the book of Genesis, the 12th chapter and verse number, verse number 1. The Bible is saying, Now the Lord say, had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. Now look at the calling of God's people. Before Abraham, God didn't have his specific special people. He didn't have a holy nation that would say, these are my people. He didn't. He had not done that. Everybody was equal. Everybody, they didn't have that special covenantal relationship with God. But God now wants to establish a covenantal relationship with humanity and he separated one from among many. He called one from among many and that which was called was Abraham. And God said, get, out, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred. And you find many of God's people, they have been separated from their kindred. So don't say, I have to go with all my parents, with all everybody. No, Abraham was not called with everybody. Praise the name of the Lord. Abraham was not called with everybody. And it had to wait. God called these men for him to start a generation, a loyal priesthood, a people that he is going to relate with on a covenantal promises. And from thy father's house and to a land that I will show thee, verse number two. And the Bible is saying, and I will make thee a great nation. Look at that. Now a man has been separated. And that is why we always say there is that which we call separation for a blessing. So don't say I have to go with everybody, with my buddies, with my peers, with my friends. No, when God chooses you, he chooses you and gives you mercy and he doesn't give others mercy. And he, him that have not obtained mercy, then cannot see things the way you see them. They can love, not love God the way you love God because for you, mercy has been bestowed. Mercy has been given. So he said, and I'll make thee a great nation. This is a promise. This is a promise that God is giving to Abraham. Remember, this time God is speaking to Abraham alone. Praise the name of the Lord. And Abraham took his wife Sarai, and he took Sarah, and he took a lot. And I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Now that is what God now is saying. He called him alone. We were there in the book of uh, Isaiah, the 55th chapter and verse number 2. The Bible is saying, Look unto Abraham your father, and unto Sarah that bare you, for I called him alone, and blessed him, and increased him alone. After his father died, God said, Get out. 
and I will show you a land where I want to take you and I will bless you there and I will increase you there. It is God is establishing a covenantal relationship now with his people. Praise the name of the Lord. Now you find now God is saying, now Moses is saying in the book of Exodus where we were, in the book of Exodus, he is saying in the book of Exodus, the 19th chapter and verse number 6, and you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. These are the children of Abraham. Because it was passed to him, to them by Abraham, an unholy people, an unholy nation. These are the words which Thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Deuteronomy the seventh chapter and verse number six. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord. I'm showing you that Peter is borrowing the words that were spoken to the Jews. They were not spoken to the Gentiles. They were spoken to the Jews. But how comes now Peter is using the same words to speak to the G Gentiles? So at that point, uh, before the coming of the Messiah, before the coming of this gospel that we are calling, having obtained this ministry, having, having received this ministry, having obtained mercy, before we obtained mercy, we were considered, uh, we were considered uh, strangers. Uh, we could not enjoy this covenantal relationship that Moses, that Abraham had and the children of Israel had with God. Because the Bible is saying in the book of Romans, the ninth chapter and verse number four, who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption? Look at that. It is them, Abraham. We see Abraham being adopted by God. He said, I want now you to be my person, my child, and your seed and your people to be my people. So we see to the Israelites, they be, it be, pertaineth to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. So all these pertained and belonged to the Israelites and it belonged to the Jews, the seed of Abraham. But now, we ourselves, we could not claim that. We could not claim that because when it came now to the promises and to the covenants and to the blessings, when it came to that, we were strangers in the book of Ephesians, the second chapter and verse number 12. The Bible is saying that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens. When you don't have Christ as your savior, when you have not received this gospel, Having obtained mercy, then you are an alien from the commonwealth of Israel. That means you cannot claim the blessings of Abraham. You cannot claim that which God promised Abraham, covenantal relationship. When God said, I will make you a great nation. When I, God said, by blessing, I will bless you. You cannot claim that until you have received this gospel. Until you have received this ministry. Until you have obtained mercy. Because mercy is that which separates you from the rest of the world. Mercy is that which separated Abraham from his kindred and from his father's house. And God said, I will make you a great nation. I will increase you and I will bless you. So mercy, he obtained mercy. So it is not of him that willeth, neither of him that learneth, but it is whom God showeth mercy. So you find without this mercy bestowed upon your life and you receiving this ministry and this gospel, you are an alien. And being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world, then when you have not received this mercy, you are without God and without hope. And that is why we thank God for mercy. We thank God for his mercy and we thank God for his love because that is what led us to repentance. When you have obtained mercy, when you have obtained mercy, then that mercy leadeth you to repentance. In the book of uh, uh, Romans, the second chapter and verse number four, the Bible is saying, Or despises thou the leeches of his goodness, the leeches of his goodness, that is the masses of God expressed to an individual or to humanity 
or to the Gentiles. There's a time we were considered as aliens and we could not, we could not claim the blessings. We could not even claim the healing when we talk about healing. If you have not received Jesus Christ, then it means you cannot even claim the blessings of God upon you. You cannot claim the, the healing, the provisions of God upon your life. Because you're a stranger. Before I go to Romans, uh, second chapter, I go to Matthew, the 15th chapter, and verse number 22, we find a woman like there who had a, a, a child that was sick. And the Bible is saying, and behold, verse number 22 of Matthew the 15, showing you how we were a stranger. We were strangers without God, without Christ. We were strangers without hope of the promises. And here is a woman, a Canaanite, a Gentile, and a woman. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast. And cried unto him saying, have mercy on me. Now that is the thing. Even this woman knew the only thing that can qualify her from Jesus uh, to Jesus' blessings and healing was the mercies of God. He said, have mercy on me. And every child of God, that is the desire. That is every prayer that God will continually extend his mercy over your life. Praise the name of the Lord. When you go to God, you desire mercy. You, you, you pray for mercy. You seek for mercy. Because without mercy of God over your life, you are a stranger and you are an alien of the blessings of God. Commonwealth of Israel. And this woman is crying. He said, have mercy on me, O Lord. Thou son of David, my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. The daughter was very sick. And she desired... But she knew the only way that Jesus can be touched and heal the daughter is because of the mercies of God. If Jesus had mercy on her, if God had mercy on her, if God have mercy on you, my brother, then the desires of your heart, that which you seek for, will be provided for. And she cried, have mercy on me, O oh, thou, O oh, oh, oh Lord, thou son of David. Because my daughter is grievously vexed. My business is affected. My family is affected. Have mercy on me. Praise the name of the Lord. But she was a stranger. She had not received this gospel. She had not received the ministry. Having obtained mercy. Verse number 23. And the Bible says, and But he answered her not a word. Look at her. Jesus himself didn't even respond to her. Because at this time, she was a stranger. She was an alien. The blessings of God was only to the Gentile, to the Jews, sorry. It was only to the seed of Abraham, them that have, had received Jesus Christ. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cried after us. Verse number 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent. Look at that. I am not sent unto the lost. I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He said, I, I, that woman has no, not, I have nothing to do with her. Whether her daughter is sick or not, I don't care. Because I'm just sent to the lost sheep of Israel. That is, my, that is my agenda. My agenda is the children of Israel, the lost sheep of Israel. And that is why he is telling his disciples, if I can quickly read Matthew, the 10th chapter, and verse number 5, he is leading, he is telling his disciples, these 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of Samaritans, Enter ye not. That is why when this woman is coming to Jesus, and she is saying, have mercy on me because my daughter is grievously vexed by a, a devil, Jesus didn't have anything to do with her. And saying, I'm not sent to anybody else but the lost sheep of Israel. And that is why now even when he is sending his disciples, he is saying, don't get, don't go there. And he told this Samaritan woman again in John the fourth chapter and verse number 22. He said to the Samaritan woman, he said, you worship ye know not what. 
We know what we worship. Why? For salvation is of the Jews. Now look at that. Here's a Samaritan woman at the well asking for mercy. But Jesus said, you people, you don't even know what you worship because salvation is of the Jews. When he is sending his disciples, he said, don't go to the ways of the Gentiles. And on the cities of Samaritans, don't even enter because this is not for them. Now look at how we, me and you, being Gentiles, we were exempted. We, we could not even touch God. Even when we pray, God will not, never hear our prayer. Jesus will never even hear our prayer. So we were strangers from the commonwealth of Israel. We were aliens. We, we could not, we were considered to them, the Gentiles we led there in the book of uh, Romans, the ninth chapter and verse number four. The Bible is saying, who are Israelites? To whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God. Even the man that is preaching now to you, I realize is by the mercies of God. Because the service of the house of God was only set aside for the Israelites and the house of Levi. And the promises was for them. The question will be now, how do we come in? Look at how desperate Gentiles were. Because we, 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 you could not pray. And God could not hear you. So back to the book of Matthew, the 15th chapter. This woman, Jesus, is, is, she is saying, Jesus is saying, no, I'm not sent to back to the lost house of Israel. Verse number 25, the Bible says, then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, then help me. I don't qualify. I don't deserve it. I have not earned it like the children of Israel. I have not earned it. I know you came to the Lordship of Israel, not the Canaanite woman like me, not the Gentiles like this preacher man, but she worshipped and he said, then help me. And look at what Jesus answered. First number 26, but he answered and said, it is not meat to take the children's bread. The children here are the children of Israel. The seed of Abraham. They are called the children of God. They are called the people. That means there's a time we were not, me and you, we were not called the people of God. And there the Bible is saying you cannot take the children's bread and cast it to do dogs. And Jesus said to this woman, when it comes to the salvation and the blessings and the healing of your daughter, it is like giving food to a dog instead of giving to a children. Look at that. And this woman is there. I'm showing you the desperate situation that the Gentiles were in. The Canaanites were in before receiving this ministry, having obtained mercy. Praise the name of the Lord. We, we, we didn't have, a, we had not obtained this mercy. We had not obtained this help from God. And she is saying, then help me. But she said, how can I even if I want to help you? How can I give children's bread and take it and take, give it to the dogs. That is showing you there's a time we were not the people of God. I'm coming from where John is saying, Peter is saying, you are a chosen generation. It has not always been like that. That was only applicable to the, Gent to the Jews. That was only acceptable and applicable to the Israelites. When it came to the Gentiles, we were not. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is why now, God prophesied through Hosea in the book of Hosea, the second chapter and verse number 22. The Bible is saying, verse number 23, the book of Hosea, he said, and I will show so her unto me in the earth. This is talking about the Gentiles. And I will have mercy upon her that I had not obtained mercy. There's a time we had not obtained mercy. You and me, Gentiles, there's a time we had not obtained mercy, and I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. And I will say, now look at that, when we obtain mercy, remember Jesus is saying to the Samaritan woman, you cannot take children's bread and give to dogs. Remember the Bible is saying we were aliens and strangers to the commonwealth of Israel. 
before we receive this. That is why if there are people that are supposed to worship God and seek the word of God and bless it more, the Bible, and it should be the Gentiles. Because this is the bridge that has taken us back to God. This is the, 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 something that has brought union between us and God. Praise the name of the Lord. He said, and I will say to them which were not my people, they were considered as, as dogs. They were considered, considered as aliens and strangers. But when they obtain mercy, when they obtain the mercies of God, God said, I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. This is Hosea prophesying. This is God speaking through Hosea that a time is coming that those people that had not obtained mercy, they will obtain the mercies of God. And when they obtain the mercies of God, that is me and you. Then God said, and I will say to them which were not my people, that thou art my people. Praise the name of the Lord. And they shall say, they, will, they shall say, thou art my God. Look at that. Now we can now go to God and call him our God. But before we received and obtained mercy, we were strangers. We were foreigners. We were aliens. Blessings and covenants and promises only pertained to the Israelites. But when we obtained mercy, now we see now having obtained mercy, we were in the book of Colossians, we are in the book of Ephesians now. There's a time we didn't have God. Ephesians, the second chapter and verse number four. The Bible is saying, but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherein he has loved us. Verse number five, the Bible is saying, even when we were dead in sins, have quickened us together with Christ. By grace now, we are saved. So you see, it starts with mercy. Mercy touches a child of God. Mercy, leach down on me. He called my name and my life he changed. His mercy leach down on you. His mercy leach down on on me and when his mercy reached down on us like Abraham was separated we are also separated from the world and we come to the house of God and now them that we were not called people of God we were called strangers and aliens now we are called the people of God what happens it is the goodness of God la leading us to repent us Romans we were there again the second chapter and verse number four we, we were led or despises thou the leeches of his goodness and forbearance, forbearance, that goodness is mercies of God. Forbearance is even when we, uh, we were sinful, God bore with that. Uh, he never considered our fallen nature, long suffering, even repeatedly. Failing him and going back to our sins. But God is long suffering. Not, not knowing. Look at that. Not knowing that the masses of God. The goodness of God. Not knowing the masses of God. The goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. And when you repented. When you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior. Then it means now you who are afar off. You that were strangers, you that were fallen as now, you can now say he is your God. Now you can qualify now that first of scripture where John uh, Peter is saying that uh, in the book of, uh, let me read again, uh, Second Peter, I want a first of scripture in Second Peter, uh, the third chapter, Second Peter, the third chapter and first number nine, the Bible is saying, Second Peter, the Lord is not slack. Concerning his promises. As some men count slackness. But is long suffering to us. Word. Long suffering. Long suffering. Toward you and me. Not willing that any should perish. But that all should come to repentance. Not knowing that the goodness of God. Leadeth us to repentance. And when we are led to repentance. Now we are called a loyal priesthood. Now when a Gentile, when a Jew 
is saying, my God. Even a Gentile also is saying, my God. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is the importance of this gospel. That is the importance of this ministry. That is the importance of the preaching of the word of God. Because when you obtain mercy, then this mercy, let's go back to the book of 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 9. The Bible is saying, but you are a chosen generation. Now I, I'm showing you how chosen now you are is that you are chosen not because you are good, but you are chosen by the mercies of God. God chose you through his mercy. And he brought you in that you may enjoy the blessings and the promises that he had with the children of Israel. We Gentiles now, we become part of it. Uh, we have now, all of us, we are baptized into one body. Whether it's a Jew or a Gentile. But you are a chosen generation. A loyal priesthood. This Peter is lighting to the Gentiles. He is saying, a holy nation, a peculiar people. That you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We are called, my brethren, to show praises unto God. We are called to worship him. Even as the children of Israel were called through Abraham to be a peculiar people. To be a holy nation. Even as Gentiles we are being called to do the same. Through mercy. Verse number 10. The Bible says, which in time past were not a people. There's a time you and me, we were not a people of God. We were considered, I repeat again, as aliens. We were strangers. We were foreigners. We could not call on God because Jesus said, how can you give children's bread to dogs? Here is a woman that have a child sick and they want their child to be healed by Jesus Christ. And then she is saying, have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. But Jesus still say, you cannot give children's bread to the dogs. That means to a stranger, to a foreigner. They were not entitled to it. There's a time and you, if anybody have not believed in Christ, he is still considered as a foreigner, as an alien when it comes to the promises of God. When it comes to the healing and provision of God over their lives, they are aliens. They are foreigners. They are strangers. They cannot enjoy it. They are not entitled to it. There's a time which in time past were not a people. There's a time I was not a people of God. You are not a people of God. We could not be counted among the people of God. But I thank God for this ministry. Having obtained mercy. Seeing we have received this ministry. We started from there. We'll come back to Peter. And say first, second Peter chapter, second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 1. The Bible is saying, therefore seeing we have received, we have this ministry. This ministry is so special. Having as we have received mercy, you can never faint. You can never get tired to hear this. Because this is what has brought you to be joined together to the promises of God. That now you are entitled. And that is why every Wednesday, every Friday, every Sunday, we are on air. What are we doing? We cannot faint because we have received this ministry by mercy. Seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, obtained mercy. So mercy qualified us. We didn't earn it. Mercy helped us to receive this gospel was given to us through mercy. That is why we cannot faint. You cannot say I have had enough of God's word. No. We faint not. As we have received mercy, we faint not. Praise the name of the Lord. Have we faint not? Because there's a time, first Peter chapter 2, verse number 10, there's a time we were not a people of God, but in time past were not, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God. 
Now we can, when a Gentile is calling on, a Jew is calling on God, even us Gentiles can call on the same God and he can hear our call and he can hear our cry. Praise the name of the Lord. So it is the mercies of God that makes the difference. It says, in time past, wherein, uh, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God. The reason why you are interested with the word of God and somebody else is out the outside there, have nothing to do with the word of God, is because you have obtained mercy. But are now the people of God which had not obtained, had not obtained mercy. But I thank God, but now have obtained mercy. But now, you that is listening to me, I thank God that you obtained mercy. That is why you are interested with the word of God. That is why you can sit before a preacher listening to the word of God for one hour, for one and a half hours, even it can go for four hours, and you faint not. Because remember, there was a time you had not obtained mercy and you are not interested with the word of God. You are not interested with the preaching of the word of God. But I thank God, lie now, you can listen. Lie now, you can have that, in, you can value the word of God. Like Job said, that I esteem thy word more than my necessary food. Why? There was a time you could not do that. There was a time food was more important than the word of God. There was a time hanging up out with the friends were more important. There was a time going to the theater, movie theaters were more important. There was a time going for parties was more important than the word of God. But when you obtained mercy, the Bible is saying, Neither, Job the 23rd chapter and verse number, that, verse number 12, Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips, in other words, I have not fainted. Praise the name of the Lord. Why? I have obtained mercy. There's a time, tell, tell me to go to church, I'll wonder for what? I didn't have the interest. You didn't have the interest. You're wondering one day in a week is, import, is enough, 20 minutes someone. And that's it. But now you're looking for every opportunity. Why? Because you, neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. He said, I have esteemed thy words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Now the word of God becomes more important. When the preaching starts, even if you had something in the kitchen going on, you switch on off the gas. Because the, you have esteemed the word of his mouth, the word of God, the ministry. Having received this ministry, seeing we have this ministry, having obtained mercy, we faint not. You esteem the word of God more, the word of his mouth more than your necessary food. Why? Because you have obtained mercy. There's a time you are not a people of God and I thank God. Now we are a people of God. I appreciate God. We are counted. Having obtained this mercy of God. Now we can be counted. That is why. Now because the Bible is saying Romans. God still talking to Moses. Let's go to Romans. The ninth chapter and verse number 15. The Bible is saying. For he said unto Moses. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Verse 16. The Bible is saying. So then. It is not of him that willeth. Neither of him that learneth. But it is whom that God showeth mercy. Praise the name of the Lord. It is whom that God showeth mercy. And I thank God that you are a partaker. Me, I am a partaker of the mercies of God. But of God that showeth mercy. I am in the church. You, and when you found the truth, my brother, you are so satisfied. You, you are so settled and you are not looking for anything else. You can only praise now the truth, the ministry, with entertainment, with storytelling. No, you cannot because you know what opportunity that God has given you by showing you his mercy. Showing me his mercy. If, without the mercies of God, I'll still be an alien. Without the mercies of God, you'll still be a stranger. But now you are a people of God. 
You, when the, the Jews are calling on God, you are also calling on God. In Romans the 30, the third chapter and verse number 29, the Bible is saying, is he the God of the Jews only? This is a question Paul is asking. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Why? Because now the Gentiles have obtained mercy. There's a time they had not ob obtained mercy. There's a time they, had on, they, didn't, they, they were not the people of God. They were strangers. Me and you, we were strangers. We were called dogs. And you cannot, Jesus said, you cannot take children's bread and give to dogs. Jesus said, don't go to the ways of the Gentiles. And in any city of the Samaritans, don't enter. This gospel was not for them. It was not for the Samaritans. It was not for the Gentiles. It was not for the Greeks. It was for the Jews. That is why he said, I'm sent to the Jews. But I thank God, before it was over with, the Gentiles obtained mercy. The same way Abraham obtained mercy. And he was separated from his kindred and from his father's house. We Gentiles also obtained mercy. And I thank God to realize it is not everybody that has obtained this mercy. Even among the Gentiles, not everybody. It is not everybody that has obtained this mercy. And that is why when you obtain it, you learn with it. You don't want to abuse it. You want to make use of it. Praise the name of the Lord. He said, is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. He is also the God of the Gentiles. Praise the name of the Lord. That when we worship God, when a Jew is worshiping God, a Gentile also is worshiping God. When they call on the promises of God, we also call on those promises of God. Hallelujah. He is not of the, the Jews only, but we also, Gentiles, are partakers because we have obtained mercy. The difference and what I'm emphasizing on is the mercies of God upon an individual is that which makes a difference. When God gives you mercy, when God shows you mercy, then he pulls you. He leads you to repentance. He leads you to the church. He leads you to the truth. Hallelujah. He is not now. Ephesians, the second chapter, we were there. When we were far off, verse number 12. We were far off, but the Bible is saying, verse number 13. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were afar off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. We that were strangers, we that were foreigners from the commonwealth of Israel, now we are brought nigh. We are brought nigh through the blood, verse number 14, of Jesus Christ, for he is our peace. Jesus Christ, and have made both one, both one, that is the Jew and a Gentile, they are both made one. They are no longer now that division. They are no longer now that now we are strangers and considered dogs. No. And there's a time Gentiles were being referred to as dogs. And we have one movement up to today. It refers to, to the Christians as dogs. Infidels. Why? Because there was that separation between Jews and Gentiles. And have broken down the middle wall of partition between us, between Jews and Gentiles. Praise the name of the Lord. Because we have now obtained mercy. We that had not obtained mercy, we have obtained mercy. Verse number 15, the Bible is saying, having abolished in his flesh the enmity. Praise the name of the Lord. Verse number 16. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body. Both. That means the Gentiles and the Jews. We are baptized into one body. And that is the body of Christ. That is the church. 
Praise the name of the Lord. Having slain the enmity thereof. Verse number 17. I go to uh, and came and preached peace uh, to you which were afar off and to them that were near, both the Gentiles and the Jews. For through him were ha both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Both, both the Jews and the Gentiles have access First number, let me read Romans the 15th chapter and first number 9. We'll come back to Ephesians. The Bible is saying that first number 9, that the Gentiles, first number 8 says what? Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made unto the fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. First number 9. And that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. Look at that. The Gentiles also became a partaker of the mercy. The same promises that were made to the fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, now through mercy, the Gentiles can now glorify God because they are also partakers of the same. And that the Gentiles, that is you and me, that is listening to me, you that cannot trace your loot to Abraham. And that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, for this cause, I will confess thee to thee among the Gentiles. And sing unto thy name. Mercy made a difference. Verse number 10. And the Bible says, and again he saith, rejoice. Hallelujah. Rejoice ye Gentiles with his people. Now look at that. The, gen the Jews were his people. And they were called to rejoice because of the promises, because of the covenants, because of the blessings, because of all these good things that God had promised them through Abraham when he obtained mercy. Now God, through Apostle Paul, he is saying the Gentiles also should also rejoice with his people as a Jew is rejoicing of his blessings and his promises and covenants. Also a Gentile should also rejoice because they are also a partaker. They are also a part of it. They also enjoy you and me that are not tracing our lineage to Abraham can also rejoice with them because the same God and the same blessings is to us word. It is given to us through this gospel, through this preaching, through this ministry we said, seeing we have this ministry, having obtained mercy. Praise the name of the Lord. Again he saith, rejoice ye Gentiles with his people, that is the Jews. So that the Jews and the Gentiles, now they are in the same body. They are now covered by the headship of Jesus Christ and they are enjoying the blessings of God equally. So that a Gentile, a Jew now don't have a preeminence against a Gentile. No, they are on the same level. The same God. The same blessings. The same favor. What has brought that is the masses of God over our lives. Over the Gentiles. Remember it is the masses of God that separated Abraham from his kindred and from his father's house. It is the same mercy, my brother, that has separated you from the world and has brought you to the same body with a Jew. So that we can rejoice together and claim the same blessings together. Praise the name of the Lord. And in that kingdom and in this church and in this body of Jesus Christ, there is no Greek and there is no Jew. All of them are one. First number 11, the Bible is saying, Again and again, praise the, praise the Lord. O ye Gentiles, and loud him, O ye people. Now everybody. Why? Because we are partakers of that blessings. We are partakers of the same covenant. They cannot lord it over us. They, they, you as a child of God, you can bow your knees and lift up your hands and you call on God and he can say, yes, that is my son. He can say, yes, that is my daughter. Why? You never used to be like that. It has not always been like that. There's a time you're a stranger. There's a time you're a foreigner. There's a time you're an alien. 
but I thank God for his, this ministry. The ministry, seeing we, seeing we have this ministry, having obtained mercy. It came through mercy. We didn't earn it. We didn't qualify for it. Even as Abraham had not done anything to be called out by God. He had not done anything to earn it. He didn't merit it. But God, through his mercy, mercy separates God's people and put them in one place. And they partake of the blessings of God. So you find all his people. We were in the book of, uh, we were in the book of Ephesians, the second chapter, verse number 18. The Bible is saying, for through him were both, we both, that is Jews and Gentiles, have access by one spirit, the same Holy Ghost. There is no Holy Ghost for a Jew and another Holy Ghost for a Gentile. No, it is the same. Praise the name of the Lord. And for through him, Jesus Christ, through this gospel, through the ministry, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. First number 19, the Bible is saying, Now therefore, you are no more, hallelujah to our God, and you are no more a stranger. You, I want to tell you, you are no more a stranger if you have received this ministry, having obtained mercy, and I pray you faint not. You are no longer a stranger. You are entitled to the blessings of God. You are entitled to the favor of God. You are entitled to a special covering of God over your life. You are entitled to that favor, that grace of God over your life. Praise the name of the Lord. God is entitled to protect you as his people. Why? You have obtained mercy. It is not now of him that we let remember we said, but it is God who showeth mercy. And when he shows, he shows, he shows you mercy, he draws you to himself. And you are called a people of God. And now, therefore, you are no more strangers and you are no more foreigners. Hallelujah. So when you talk to God, you are not talking to him as a foreigner. He knows you. He knows that you are part of his people. He knows you belong to him. He knows he has separated you from the world and put you in his group of people that are called the people of God, the saints. Hallelujah. And that comes through this ministry. Seeing we have this ministry, having obtained mercy. This ministry, we have received it through mercy. You didn't work for it. You didn't earn, earn it. Abraham never, for him to be a father of many nations, he didn't earn it. God just said, after, before he did anything. Like the Bible says, before in the book of, I think it's in the book of, uh, uh, Romans the 11th, the 9th chapter, verse number 11, the Bible is saying, For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil. Abraham not, had not done anything good. He had not done anything evil. But God through his mercy chose him, called him out from his kindred from his country, from his father's land, and said, I will bless you. Did he earn it? No. Did he merit it? No. Did he work for it? No. And the Bible is saying, this is the, the separation between Jacob and Esau. God said to Rebekah, before even the children were ever born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to the election might stand, not of works. Mercy is, not, is when you don't deserve it. You are naturally deserved, deserve, you deserve to be judged of God. To be condemned because of your sins. But God overrules that. The Bible says, mercy rejoiceth against judgment. 
Instead of you being condemned, James the second chapter and verse number 13, the Bible is saying, instead of you being condemned, God say, for he shall have judgment without mercy. That by the Bible says, that, that have showed no mercy. But the bottom line says, and mercy rejoiceth against judgment. So Abraham had not done anything special than his father. Or anybody else from where he was in the land of, of the Chaldeans. But God through his mercy called him out. You have not done anything. But God, not of works, back to the book of Romans, the ninth chapter and verse number 11. The Bible is saying, the children, having not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. And you, my brother, you, my sister, you are no more strangers. You are no more fallenness. But you are fellow citizens and you are entitled to the blessings of God. And I spoke all these, Ephesians the second chapter and verse number 19, to let you know, now therefore you are no more strangers and fallenness, but fellow citizens. You are a fellow citizen in that ministry. In that gospel, in that calling, in that group that constitutes the people of God. But fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. You can bow your knees and you'll call on God and he'll hear you. When God's people call him, he healeth. Praise the name of the Lord. There was a time we were not considered because we were strangers. But I thank God through this ministry, seeing we have this ministry, having obtained, having received and obtained mercy, we faint not. And I pray you don't faint, but you continue even when you're in trouble. When you're in need, call on him and he will hear you. The children of Israel, they were in bondage in Egypt. They called him and he had them because they were his people. And he said to Pharaoh, let my people go. And when you call on him right now, he will tell that condition, let my person, let my daughter, let my son go. When you call on him, when the, when the enemy is binding you and holding you back, God will say, let my child go. Because now you are not a stranger. You are a fellow citizen with the saints of God and the household of God. They called on him and he heard them. And you can call on him and he will hear you. Because now you are a fellow citizen. You belong to that country. You belong to that kingdom. You belong to God. And when you are in need, you call on him. When a Jew called him, he had. And when a Gentile will call him even right now, he will hear. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is the encouragement I want to give you. Even when things don't seem to be clear. Even when you are seeing as it were through the glass darkly. Call on him and things will clear up. Call on him and he'll show up for you. Call on him and he'll make a way for you. Praise the name of the Lord. And I want to thank God. But now we know we are not strangers. We are not foreigners. We are not aliens. But we are fellow citizens. And you are entitled to every blessing that you can think of. You are entitled to every visitation that you can think of. You are entitled to the favor and the grace of God over your life because you are a child of God. You belong to that city. That, that is where we are fellow citizens. You belong to him. You, have, you, have, you, have, you are called by his name. You are called by the name of God. Praise the name of Jesus. And I want to thank God and to bless God for you. So let's close with a word of prayer and I pray that good Lord will show up in your life and confidently, you walk from today knowing you are not a stranger. You can, even when you are walking in the streets, you are confident that God is with you. Why? Because you belong to him. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. 
He will always be with you every step of the way. God will guide you. Praise the name of the Lord. Why? You belong to him. There was a time he had no business to do with you because you are a stranger. But now you belong to him. You are entitled to those blessings. Praise the name of the Lord. So whenever you go through your day-to-day endeavors, know that God is with you. The hand of God is over your life. The favor of God is upon you to give you victory, to give you that which you desire. Praise the name of the Lord. So I pray that God will guide you. God will lead you. Let's lift up your hands and we pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my viewers and my listeners, O God Almighty. Dear God, you have encouraged us and even to make us know we are no longer strangers. We are no longer foreigners, O God Almighty. But dear God, we are fellow citizens in that kingdom where Jesus is the head, where God we are entitled to the promises and the blessings of God upon our lives. I pray for that brother and that sister that is lifting up their hands, O Jehovah, in faith believing that God, the desires of their hearts, O God Almighty, be supplied in the name of Jesus that you may hear their cry. You may hear their call, O God Almighty. Even as you heard your children, the children of Israel, when they were in bondage, and yet God, you did deliver them. I pray they are calling on you line now, them though they were Gentiles and they were strangers today, they are no longer strangers, O God Almighty. As they call on you, Father God, I pray you hear. And dear God, you supply according to thy riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Let the blessings of God be their heritage, O God Almighty. Let dear God, the covenantal relationship be strengthened upon their lives, O God Almighty. But God, you said by healing, you're going to heal them. By multiplying, you're going to multiply them. In the name of Jesus, it is my prayer. It will be done in their lives. In Jesus' mighty name, I do pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. God be with you. Go confidently. Walk confidently. Testify. Tell it all. Tell the people that care to know that you are a child of God. You are no longer a stranger. You are no longer a foreigner. But now you are a fellow citizen. As seeing we have this ministry. Having obtained mercy. And I thank God for the mercies of God over your life. I thank God that that mercy will continue to preserve you, to keep you, and sustain you in all truth. Faint not, my brother. God bless you, and God keep you till we meet again. Amen and amen.